Hi, you're listening to What's New Today. This is a kids and family podcast about current events shaping our lives. As in every episode, in this episode too, we take one story, which is a current event. And I talk about this new story with a young co-host who joins me in this episode. This is Sangeeta, your host from India. Uh, my young co-host for today is... Shambhavi. Hi, Shambhavi. Welcome back. Uh, can you tell our listeners who may not know you from before, um, you know, where you're from, what you do, which grade you are in, etc. Um, I am Shamrubi. Uh, I live in Delhi and I am a 14-year-old 10th grader who has been on this podcast about choice by now. And I believe that's enough of an introduction. Absolutely. Uh, but what subjects do you really, really like Shambhavi in school? The, the ones which interest me? Yeah. History. Mm-hmm. And um, chemistry. History and chemistry. <laughs> what an interesting combination. Other ones just seem burdensome. All the others are burdensome. So do you have a sense of what you want to do? Um, you know, what kind of subject choices you want to make in grades 11 and 12? The ones which I want and the ones which I'm going to take are pretty different um, because honestly, <laughs> I am a humanities enthusiast at heart, but then there aren't many job opportunities if you actually look at it only in the humanities sector. So I guess I'm pretty much forced to take science in 11th and 12th, but then I wish to like pursue humanities in college and maybe UPSC. Maybe UPSC. Oh, that's a very interesting idea. But I'm not so sure if uh, we can still say in this generation that humanities does not have enough job opportunities. Uh, admittedly, it appears that science leads us to more opportunities today. But yeah, you may not want to close that door yet. But I'm sure you and your parents have spoken about it or will continue to speak about it and you all will figure out what works best for you. Good luck and on to today's topic. So today's episode is also on the style of a 20 question game, which means Shambhavi actually doesn't know what the new story for today is. So I'm going to give her a little bit of background to the new story and I'm going to ask her to guess what is likely to have happened as in the second part of this news story. So for those of you who read the newspapers regularly, this may not come as a surprise, but I know a large chunk of my audience, which is younger children, are unlikely to be picking up a newspaper every day and reading. So if this is where you get your news from, the What's New Today podcast, more power to you. Let's see if Shambhavi um, is able to unravel the second half of this news story. Ready, Shambhavi? Shall I read aloud the first part? Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Uh, so it's not just going to be two sentences as I very often do. A lot of people who live in areas uh, which currently have wars or conflicts or which have a very weak economy, which means there aren't too many jobs for them and there may not even be enough food to go around. A lot of these people leave their country of residence. And uh, where do they go to? They have to head to developed or rich countries. One such country that quite a few people who live not very far from Europe uh, go to United Kingdom or the UK. Now, when these people enter the UK, which means, you know, they might silently uh, get into a boat, cross the English Channel and just sneak into the country, they are called illegal migrants. So when these illegal migrants enter the UK, they can seek what is called an asylum, which means they are saying, I am fleeing my country because uh, there is a war going on there. Or if I stay back, there is a threat to my life or my mental safety. So please allow me to stay in your country and give me um, the right to work, earn money and live in your country. Most of the developed countries have a scheme in which they allow 
such refugees to seek asylum and then they will look at whether your claim is genuine or not and they may choose to decide whether they can allow you to stay in their country or whether they'll uh, send you forcibly outside the country. So this is the background. Now the United Kingdom has been dealing with a very large number of such people entering their country in the last few decades and they really don't want to allow too many of these people coming inside their country. So to deter them, the UK has recently passed a bill. What do you think this bill contains? That they are not going to allow all of the people entering in, maybe just a ratio of them. You're saying they will completely disallow anybody. They will dismantle the asylum seeking process altogether. No, like they will limit the amount of people they allow to enter the country. So a lot of these people are not entering the country very legally. So the you know the way they enter is they'll get into a boat. So UK is an island. So people get into a boat and they'll sneak in uh, to the mainland of the UK in places where there is no border patrolling service. So you can in the darkness of the night and stuff like that, and they can enter the country. So it's going to be. Uh, I mean, if you just pass a bill and say I'm not going to allow someone to enter. Uh, how do you enforce it? Building high walls. <laughs> ha, building walls is a great idea. Donald Trump has been speaking about it. Um, something similar, that he is going to build a wall between the United States and Mexico. Uh, but, but no, they are not going to build a wall around that island country. They are only going to let smart people enter their country. <laughs> <laughs> what? So what do they do? So imagine somebody is living in a place like, uh, or used to live in a place like Syria or Lebanon and uh, you know that country has uh, has had a lot of wars and conflicts and they are fleeing their country so when they enter they'll give them all uh, an IQ test maybe they could um, check the previous test papers from their old country <laughs> uh, but if you're fleeing a war zone you don't typically pick up your old test papers to enter another country <laughs> Then just don't let them in. Just don't let them in. Yeah, that's actually what the United Kingdom wants. They just don't want these people coming in at all. But you know what? They can't go. They cannot go and announce to the world that I'm not taking in anybody who is uh, seeking asylum because they will appear unfair in the eyes of the world. They will appear to not have compassion. So they also have to appear to the rest of the world to be doing the right thing, right? They will send them to France. France. Okay, why France? Because Britain does not like France. Britain does not like France. <laughs> they just dumb them. You know what? I'm going to give you this. You're actually very, very close to the real bill. The new bill that they passed, according to that, they're going to pack all of these people into an airplane and they're going to drop them somewhere. Yeah. Where would that be? You don't have to give me the name of the exact place. You just have to think about what kind of a place it might be. A place which is not a war zone. A place which is not a war zone, hopefully. Which has many jobs. Australia. Australia, of all places. <laughs> Why would Australia accept? Um, actually, no, they wouldn't. But they have a lot of land and very less people. Yeah, that logic is absolutely true. But since you brought Australia into the picture, I'm going to tell you something. This Here's a story uh, about something that happened in the year 2001. Even uh, Australia used to face this problem. A lot of refugees would flee their countries and they would all want to come to Australia. They would come to Australia by a small boat to an island. They would seek refuge there. In 2001, one such boat the engine had malfunctioned, the boat was almost breaking apart and everybody was going to fall into the sea. Now, according to international law, if there's any ship nearby, by law, that ship has to come and rescue these people and take them and go to the nearest port. At which point, a Norwegian ship was the one that saved the people who were caught on that boat. The, the ship was turning around and going towards Australia. 
Australia refused to allow the Norwegian ship to enter its waters. It said that we will not allow any of these refugees to come into our country. We will de decide who enters and who does not enter. So I don't think Australia is ever going to accept any refugees from the United Kingdom. Back to the United Kingdom. Think of, should, will it be a rich country, poor country? Poor country. Yeah, it is a poor country. Answer is Rwanda, which is a country in Africa. United Kingdom is, has come to an agreement with Rwanda that we will pay you a big fat load of money and we will send you all of these people to your country. You can keep them there. And after that, we will process all their papers. And if we think that they should genuinely uh, be given refuge, be given asylum, they will continue to live in Rwanda not enter the United Kingdom. We will just pay Rwanda money so that these people can continue to live in Rwanda. But what kind of a country do you think Rwanda is? Have you heard anything about Rwanda? Um, poor, South African, no food. And it's also a country which sees a lot of violence. It's not a country that most people deem very safe. So the, the European Commission of Human Rights does not think people who end up in Rwanda are going to be actually safe. If this is the background, now what do you think of this bill? Nonsense. Uh, if they're escaping a war zone just to enter another, that does not make sense. What do you think of the United Kingdom's attitude? They are just trying to look nice, but they're really not. They know that they have to do the dirty work. And either way, they are doing it, even if they put on a mask. No safe, clean, expensive European country would let refugees enter. So they are just looking for a cheap way to get rid of their problem. They are going to do whatever they want to do. They don't care. They have money. That is very right. Why do you think the leader of a country like Rishi Sunak, who's now the leader of the United Kingdom, uh, why do you think he is desperately pushing for a bill like this to pass? Because um, I think uh, the UK's economy is already degrading. They have hyperinflation going on. And basically, they're, they're not able to fully sustain their own people. So how can they accommodate more people? So they're just trying to look for a mediating pay. Yep, the UK's economy is slowing down. People aren't having uh, enough uh, jobs to go around. Food prices and prices in general, even house rentals and all of that have gone up quite a bit. So the prime minister who first wants to be elected back to power. His party has to be elected back to power. So they'll first try to do what their country's citizens want them to do. On that note, shall we quickly do a quiz time? Uh, do you want to ask me the three questions? Any three questions based on our conversation? Why did the UK choose Rwanda to accommodate the immigrants? Oh, that's a tough question. Okay, I'm assuming Rwanda has a government that was accommodative to the viewpoints of the United Kingdom. And they said, okay, no problem, give us money. Uh, we'll take on all those plane loads of people and we'll try and build them a shelter. And they're not promising anything beyond that. Yeah, so they found one poor country that was willing to accommodate. And that's why the UK chose Rwanda as the destination for asylum seekers. Uh, who, who is the leader of the UK? Oh, the Prime Minister as of 2024, April, is Rishi Sunak. Um, is Rwanda an African country or a European country? Rwanda is an African country. It's, I think, in the eastern central Africa. So I want to leave our listeners with one very, very important point to note. Just because the UK has passed this bill does not mean that this will actually happen. 
because there are uh, people who have challenged this bill, the legality of this bill. So it is possible that it may actually not fructify. So we'll have to wait and watch. Um, but if it does, then it can mean that many other European countries may take a similar route in future. Shambhavi, how did you like this story? Like I did find your questions amusing, but apart from that, I don't think it's something very new in the world of geopolitics. Something which keeps happening, but you know, it's nice to um, rattle our heads and try to find out the reason behind stuff governments do. Mm, that is true. So the sad part is this is not new. It keeps happening. And the good part is we can keep debating and talking about it and, and trying to understand why people behave the way they do. On that note here, some information to all of our listeners on how we go about producing each one of our episodes. So the first step is always we brainstorm and come up with a list of topics that we think are positive, meaningful and engaging to young children and for whole families to sit down together and listen to. And the next step is, of course, the recording process where we invite a child or more than one child in each of our episodes. And um, we are very conscious that children should be allowed to express their ideas freely without the fear of being judged because we don't believe that there are right and wrong answers to most questions. And then we edit them in the back end. Uh, we remove unwanted pauses and we insert all the fun sound effects that kids love so much. Each one of these take time, effort and money. So if you've enjoyed listening to our episodes and would like to support Team What's New Today, you can support us by donating any sum of your choice. The link to supporting us is in the show notes below. We'll be back soon with our next episode. Until then, it's goodbye from me, Sangeeta, and from my young co-host today. Bye.